Welcome back to my series on fraction sense. This is part three, where we're gonna talk about computation with unit fractions. One half, one third, and one twelfth are all unit fractions because the numerator is a one. So that word unit again means one. So basically, when you have children who are beginning to put fractions together to add them up, it's really important that they understand the reason why and how to find equivalent fractions. So we'll start with something not quite this hard. Let's just begin with one half plus, let's say one eighth. So kids should already be thinking, well, I know that one half is bigger than one eighth. This is covered in Lesson one and a little bit in lesson two about why. The inverse relationship between the number and the denominator and the size of the fraction. So if the kid, your child, can pull out one half and one eighth and lay them together, they should recognize the answer is only a little bit more than one half. And you should be asking them to explain to you as you go what they're thinking. Maybe they'll take fourths and say, well, look, I can see and I remember from before that two-fourths is equal to one-half, and that's true, but two-fourths plus one-eighth, it's still not simplified down to all having a common piece size, which is critical to adding fractions. So I call the common piece size, instead of saying just having a common denominator, because again, the kids thinking concretely, a piece size is concrete. The word denominator, they might know it, but it doesn't really click the same way in their brain neurologically. So stick with common P size and then say denominator afterwards to make that connection. So they might even try six and they'll see that it's, well, three six works for like two fourths. So that's interesting, but it doesn't, the next piece of six is more than one eighth, of course, so it doesn't work. So then you go back to the drawing board and all this time that it takes them, their brains are really thinking and grappling and struggling productively, which is what you want kids to do as they learn. It should not be easy all the time. But they'll eventually get down to eighths. And they'll see that the answer is five eighths. And so you want to ask your child, well, in order to get that answer, what did you do with one half? And they'll say, I changed it or I converted it to four eighths. So along the way, they see that one half equals four eighths. So they thought about four eighths plus one eighth. And I would use words like four eighths, four pieces, plus one more eighth. Four eighths plus one eighth has to be five eighths. Because a lot of children, even in upper elementary school, We'll say this answer is five sixteenths because they're just adding like they learned when they were really small. But a knowledgeable kid will recognize why 16 makes no sense whatsoever because 16 are really teeny pieces and they have uh, not a lot to do with ace except well, they're half the size. So before I go any further, if you're interested in me doing these sorts of videos but directed right towards your children to skip the middle person who has to explain it, I'd be happy also to explain it to kids using the way I would describe it to six, uh, six and seven year olds, if interested. So leave a comment uh, if you would like to see that kind of video. Also, I have many more videos on TikTok and Instagram regarding all kinds of mathematical concepts. So look for Super Teacher Guy and you'll find me having already done many more videos. Anyway, one fourth plus one third is a much harder problem because neither one of these denominators now sort of fits in easily with the other denominator. So it's gonna take your kids a lot more work and hopefully they'll see your interesting pattern here that most kids are just taught to memorize but not fully understand why they do it. So one fourth plus one third. Well, now your kid is just gonna go through the process of maybe guessing and checking to see what size piece works. And they might start with six then they'll recognize that it doesn't quite make it. But maybe some of the kids will see that this last piece is like half in and half out. 
And that's a good thing to recognize because maybe then they'll skip the eighths and go right to the twelfths because they remember, well, 12 is half the size of a six because the number 12 is double six. And there's that double half relationship. And they line up all these twelves and then they found their answer. But how do they justify it? Well, they have to understand that one fourth is equivalent to three twelfths, and one third is equivalent to four twelfths. So the answer to one fourth plus one third is seven twelfths. And you can see why kids will be totally confused without seeing these concrete models because one plus one is not really seven and four plus three is not 12. However, as we know, four times three is 12. And so the idea of multiplying denominators is what shrinks down the denominator or shrinks, uh, it will increase the denominator, but it shrinks the piece size. And that is an important concept moving forward. So we recognize that one fourth is equal to three twelfths, one third equals four twelfths, Therefore, I've converted and my answer is again, 7 twelfths. Let's look at one more concept that I'll then cover more in fraction sense four. So a big piece of the puzzle is understanding the computation behind why 1 fourth equals 3 twelfths. We can see it concretely and the kids might recognize that four times three is 12. So the idea though, of why these fractions are equivalent, which is an intermediate step, is they recognize there are three times as many. And that shows up in multiplying the denominator, four times three is 12. But they can see that when they tripled the denominator, they also tripled the numerator. Not because you told them to, or the teacher said to do it, but because it makes sense. There's three pieces, obviously not just one. One twelfth would not be one fourth. They're different size pieces. And same thing over here, three, one third became 12. We multiplied by four, because there are four times as many pieces now. And because there are four pieces, we multiplied the numerator by the same thing. So it's no coincidence that in unit fractions, the new numerator is equivalent to the multiplier. And that's a good step and again, something good to talk about. And next time we'll clarify and go into more detail about finding a common denominator, but making sense of it. Thanks for watching and look for part four soon. And if you haven't done so yet, Please watch part one and part two, and also please subscribe. Thanks. Bye-bye.